And we back. We got some news here in Cowboy Land. We got a brand new head coach, Mike McCarthy, uh, and it happened pretty fast. He's here after a sleepover at the Joneses' house. Now, I was asked earlier, why does Mike McCarthy have to stay at Jerry Jones' house? Why couldn't he stay at the hotel? To be fair, Jerry Jones' house is probably built like a hotel. Like his guest room is probably sponsored by Sleep Number. You know what I mean? So that would just kind of make a little bit of sense. And uh, you know, I guess they just got everything hashed out. They hashed out the details while watching Lion King and Jerry Jones' theater or whatnot uh but he's here it's happened it's official and he's on a five-year contract so he's gonna be here for a minute um i'm gonna talk about how i feel we're gonna talk about some pros and cons and uh we're just gonna cover our bases here and uh hey tune into the to the uh to the round table uh me brother law nation foots and okoye media are going to discuss this with a little bit of uh with a little bit of friction i don't know if we are are going to agree or if we're going to disagree on how we feel about this signing but it should be interesting now this news broke earlier around like 9 a.m or so and i just kind of wanted to wait i didn't want to jump out real real quick i wanted to wait and let some more information come out um andre 3000 says i'm a player i ain't gonna tell you all the details you know what i mean i just wanted some of those details to kind of come out a little bit and um we have an announcement of the defensive coordinator as well. I'll probably do another video. Uh, just kind of watch a film on what his defenses look like so I'll have a solid idea of what our defense would look like. But some people in Dallas Cowboy land, they love the signing and some people absolutely hate it. But I think there's a lot of people that's right in the middle. They're just pretty indifferent about it. Um, it's interesting because I heard the Dallas Cowboy radio people, they were saying along the lines of, hey, Mike McCarthy is a cool signing, but people would be more excited if it was like a Sean Payton type of deal. Well, this is what kind of has me thinking a little bit, right? Let's just kind of break this down a little bit. Uh, if you're a Cowboy fan that does not like the signing, you're probably saying something along the lines of, hey, he's, he, you know, he has Aaron Rodgers, but he only has one Super Bowl. He's had uh, losing seasons. Well, Sean Payton has had Drew Brees, and he's only had one Super Bowl. He's also had losing seasons, you know what I mean? So, you know, you can kind of, like, it's hard to win Super Bowl. So I'm not going to just come out and say Mike McCarthy should have won thousands of Super I used I used to think that way. I used to think, hey, if you got Aaron Rodgers, I need you to win six Super Bowls, but it's not easy. You kind of need uh, the entire team to be intact. Uh, and the Green Bay Packers didn't really win the Super Bowls until that defense was intact. And if you look at the Saints, they didn't win a Super Bowl until their defense was intact. You know, we look at the Dallas Cowboys, we got talent on both sides of the ball. We ain't got Drew Brees and we ain't got Aaron Rodgers, but damn it, we got Dak Prescott. And I think that's impressive. We got Ezekiel Elliott. I think that's impressive. Um, our offensive line is aging but they're not bad and we got Amari Cooper and all these other little pieces the defense is cool I want to add pieces to it but this may be like if you take away like the whole quarterback talk because I know a lot of people won't allow me to say that Dak Prescott now is as good as Breeze and Aaron Rodgers or whatever but uh, yeah, my head. Uh, Dak <laughs> Look, Dak ain't super elite like those guys, or at least where they were in their in their prime. But Dak was just like a top three quarterback last year. Okay, so you take a top three quarterback and you take the rest of the team. I think the rest of the Cowboys team is a little more talented than what those teams were. Now, if you can disagree with me, fine. I ain't finna fuss and scream and get hoarse about it. Um, it's just how I feel. So you take this team and you give it to Mike McCarthy. I think that he can make something uh, something positive out of it. What I do like about it is that we're uh, we're keeping Kellen Moore. I would have been absolutely sick if Mike would have come in and said, hey, I want my own offensive guy. And that guy would have been you know, would have been whoever the hell he was, just some, you know, regular guy. And then Keller Moore goes on to Miami. He, you know, sets the league on fire with his offensive uh, expertise or whatever, you know. Um, the Cowboys went from like the 20-something offense to like the one and two or something like that. You know, it was kind of up and down all season. So I was glad that we didn't lose out on Keller Moore. And if anything, Mike McCarthy being like an offensive guy, he can kind of groom Keller Moore. You know, uh, he's also a quarterback guy. I'm air quoting all this stuff um 
I've never been the type to use the uh, phrasage of, uh, you know, quarterback guru. But, you know, some people do. Um, but, hey, if he's going to be a quarterback guy, then sure, let's help out young Rain Dakota Prescott and make him as um, as good as he can be. Now, I'm going to have I'm dropping a whole nother video on Mike Nolan being his defensive coordinator or whatever. So we'll cross that road and have that decision later on. But it seems like the offense will be in good hands. But if we could talk about pros and cons for a little bit, right, just some of the good things that uh, that I feel about Mike McCarthy is uh, he has experience in the NFL. He's got playoff experience and he's got Super Bowl experience. You know, what I mean, uh, where, you know, Cowboy fans are kind of dying to get to that NFC championship game. Well, he's won a few. He's lost a few, but he's won a few. Uh, he's been in those games. He's been in those Super Bowl games um, and he's been in the league. You know, I was kind of weary of college coaches or whatever. College coaches kind of make me nervous. Um, you know, people love to say, uh, well, well, Vice Jimmy Johnson was a college coach. Well, Jimmy Johnson played in the non salary, uh, the non salary cap era, or he coached in the non salary cap era. Um, this is a whole different level of football here. And some college coaches, you know, they, I mean, some of them do great. I mean, I would have to sit down and think about it. Um, if you want to, if you want to correct me, go in the chat box and, and say something about it, I guess. But, you know, I, I would have preferred someone that has league experience. But not only do we have someone that has league experience, but but we got somebody that has, you know, playoff and, you know, Super Bowl experience. So you could take that and, um, you know, bunch that up with this team that's ready to win now, in my opinion, and see what you can make out of it. Um, some other positives about Mike McCarthy. Uh, you know, it's interesting when you listen to the you know the radio people and the dot com people talk about him it sounds like he's leaving like this rehab facility you know what i mean they're saying oh mike mccarthy he has this new way to look at things oh he's embracing analytics he took time away and now he's back he's da 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 boom, boom, boom. okay cool you know what i mean because one of the biggest uh one of the biggest criticisms of mike mccarthy was that he refused to change his offense that he was very stubborn with changing with the with uh how how national football league teams ran their offense and that's very lenahan ish you know cowboy fans had their plight with uh lenahan on that but there was this interview that I ain't gonna plug because they ain't paying me for it. But Mike McCarthy has uh, has embraced analytics with the air quotes or whatnot. Um, he's been you know watching these new OCs uh, run their teams. He's been watching Kellen. He's been watching Sean McVay. He's been watching uh, Shanahan and things like that. McDaniel's and he likes aggressive offenses. He you know he wants to be one of those offenses that that kind of hit you first. You know what I mean? He's uh, he's all about changing personnel now. He's introduced producing motion he's admitted that he got away from motion and and personnel packages and things like that so i mean as long as he tell okay i think if you know if he just kind of let Kellen Moore, you know do do Kellen Moore things you know i think i think he'll be fine here just kind of groom him and, and give him whatever wisdom that you can give him but just kind of let Kellen rock i think everything will work out on the offensive end um long as he don't step on it so as long as he don't think aaron Rodgers is on this thing as long as mike mccarthy and i hear like oh aaron will just save us or whatever as long as he ain't doing nothing like that um and he's kind of you know doing his head coach thing but he's letting kellen do his head do his oc thing uh, i think we'll be fine uh on that standpoint if i could talk about his cons for a minute man at some point in his green bay packer tenure i do think he lost his team um i'm not a fan of coaches that lose their team uh the last as cowboy coach never really lost their team but mike mccarthy kind of lost their team and aaron uh, aaron, aaron Rodgers uh was kind of diva-ish for uh for uh, for uh for a good little bit i don't know if you know, I, I don't know how to feel about that you know so, i mean you know everybody wants this hard-ass coach that's gonna demand things from their players and hey he didn't demand shit from aaron Rodgers or whatever so we're gonna have to have that conversation um in terms of him yeah I, I mean i think as long as you win it's cool i think you know he lost uh he lost i guess respect or whatever from aaron Rodgers because he wasn't willing to change with the um you know to change with the times or whatnot he didn't want to innovate his offense but hey you know shit, he can come here and not want to do that i don't think Dak is going to play diva with him but hey a guy like zeke might you know what i mean so uh, i think that's something interesting thing that we could uh that we can look out for um i talked about his uh his you know stuck in his ways the offense things like that but like uh people want to talk about the last cowboy head coach in which i won't name him because i mean people been talking about him this whole time uh but clock management right <laughs> 
Mike McCarthy ain't great at, he ain't great at, 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 at clock management. I think, you know, he's in that same tier with these other head coaches that Cowboys, that Cowboy fans really want. Like uh, Andy Reid's another guy who's not great at clock management. We've seen Sean McVay make some mistakes at clock management or whatever. Clock management ain't the easiest thing in the world. I don't think, I don't think there's really a gang of coaches that are really super good and perfect at it. I, I think the best guy I know, the best guy with clock management skills is like Tony Romo. Like Tony Romo is, <laughs> that dude is fantastic. He'll tell you, yeah, we got about four plays. You'll be down to like a minute and 19 seconds. That'll give you time to, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But, um, yeah, man, Mike, uh, Mike has been criticized, uh, criticized, uh, plenty times about his, uh, clock management. Plus, I don't want things to get bad. I don't want us to lose a few games. You think it's cool to get massages during during team meetings? Oh, y'all forgot about that, didn't you? Don't forget about that, my player. Hey, man, I, I don't ever want you to be comfortable enough that you can you can go and go and get massages on the Dallas Cowboys' is dime, sir. You know what I mean? If you're gonna be the head coach of this thing, this thing matters first. So you know, you you go and you you go to Robert Kraft's massage parlor on your own free time, fam. But don't do that in the middle of the season during the meeting like he did with with uh with uh green bay now i don't think he'll do that again but i mean hey it's fair it happened before i mean hey if it happened one time it'll probably happen again uh how do i feel about it i don't know man i, I mean shit, as long as you win <laughs> you win ball games you can do what you want in cowboy land that seems that seems to be the notion here cowboy fans really don't care uh what you do as long as you bring in the um the w's and um we'll see if he's capable of bringing in those said w's now i ain't want to hold y'all all day man um i got to get ready for this uh for this round table we got later on um y'all kind of be ready and tune in for that i think the countdown is going right now so i'll see y'all there Shouts out to all my patron people salute to y'all uh follow me on twitter and instagram v-o-c-h-l-o-m-b-a-r-d-i check out channels for cheap and affordable y'all hold it down for the doski wilson and peace and whiskey man till next time salute cable bill was way too high i reached out to affordable sticks.com they sent me a fire stick plug that thing into the hdmi now i get unlimited shows movies and live tv i'm a huge sports fan so i love league pass sunday ticket and i get the pay-per-view fights for free that's something for the whole family you can buy a fire stick for every tv in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable that's affordable sticks.com there's a link in my description you should go click it cut the cord man after canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. Some people pay $200 plus a month. I paid $120 a year, or you can go $15 a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get 2,500 HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV Guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is multi-screen feature. so if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Sticks, Smart TVs, Tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven-day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. If you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it.